Good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Tim Lin, and I am the Director of Product for SIP Trunk Inc. with Sangoma. Today, I would like to take some time to talk to everyone about Stir Shaken, which has been a hot topic due to the deadline for compliance coming up on June 30th. Here's a little overview of what we'll be discussing today. First, I'd like to quickly tell you guys a little bit more about Sangoma. Then, we'll be diving into the why behind Stir Shaken followed by the implementation of the technology. Finally, I want to share how VI Communication Services, formerly known as VoIP Innovations, can help you. First, a quick overview of Sangoma as a company. Sangoma is a business-to-business -business company that focuses on delivering a complete set of communication solutions, all built and designed by us. VI Communication Services, falls into a group of Sangoma products that we call Communications as a Service. Some of our sister products include our unified communications product, SwitchVox, our new meeting and video conferencing service, Sangoma Meet, which by the way is available for free at meet.sangoma.com, and our CPaaS product, Appidates, which allows you to integrate voice, text, and video communication into applications and websites. In addition to the, our communication services, we also offer several physical devices, including SPCs, VoIP gateways, telephony cards, phones, headsets, and more. A little more about the products that I work on. Sangoma's wholesale SIP trunking services are designed for many different types of companies, including, but not limited to, cloud communications providers, MSPs, ITSPs, contact centers, and even large enterprises. We offer voice services your company can use, as well as a new stream of revenue with service that you can resell. To start off on Stir Shaken, I want to explain the why behind it, and it extends past some Ian Fleming fan wanting to make telecommunications look cool. It's important as we look at the technology to understand what it is trying to accomplish, as that will help the process make more sense. The main goal of the TRACED Act, in which the Stir Shaken mandate originates from, is to stop illegal caller ID spoofing. In the US, caller ID spoofing is actually generally legal. While generally legal though, it is illegal to spoof caller ID with intent to defraud, cause harm, or wrongfully obtain anything of value in both voice calls and text messaging services. These fraudsters can't help but to exploit anything they can though. Several scams, typically targeting older Americans, have popped up offering COVID-19 tests or pre-approved medications and supplies in return for insurance information, money, or both. The FCC website keeps an up-to-date list of caller ID spoofing scams to protect yourself and loved ones from. So what does this all add up to? around $10.5 billion lost to scams in the US in 2018. On top of that, a loss of trust in phone calls because you never know who is on the other end. With 60 billion fraudulent robocalls in 2019, we needed a way to return integrity to the technology. So, point of view, you're an illegal caller ID spoofer. What exactly are you contending with? Let's start by going over what STIR Shaken is literally. STIR stands for Secure Telephony Identity Revisited and is a set of standards created by the Internet Engineering Task Force to help prevent illegal robocalling. Shaken is Secure Handling of Asserted Information Using Tokens and is the set of protocols that dictate how STIR is deployed by service providers within their network. Essentially, STIR is the standard and SHAKEN is the technology used to meet that standard. This is a general overview of the STIR SHAKEN process. There are two different parts, the technology and the call flow and the different authoritative bodies that manage the processes. These are their stories. Let's start with the authorities and repositories that handle the keys and certificates used. Whenever you see information about STIR SHAKEN, you'll see a lot of acronyms. Quite a few entities start with STI. That stands for Secure Telephony Identity. First and foremost, the STIGA, or Governance Authority, 
is the Alliance for Telecommunications Industry Solutions, or ATIS. They are responsible for defining the rules for certificate management and to ensure stir shaken's proper use. Next is the Policy Administrator, which is currently run by iConnective. The PA is responsible for determining whether a company meets the requirements needed to participate in Stir Shaken, which we'll go over in detail a little later. If a company has met the requirements, then the Policy Administrator will give that company a token, which is needed when approaching the next entity on our list. In addition to verifying the company meets the requirements, they will determine the annual fee for participating in the ecosystem, which is based off of revenue filed with the FCC. The last thing we'll go over is the certificate authority. There are multiple certificate authorities which give out the certificates needed to sign your outgoing calls. In order to receive a certificate from one of these companies, you must have that token from the policy administrator. There are a few of these out there, and iConnective provides a full list of approved certificate authorities on their website. So to sum up what we've been talking about, ATIS, the governance authority, is sitting pretty on top and working with everyone, including the FCC, to determine the rules and any changes that need to happen to improve the system. iConnective, the policy administrator, is responsible for determining and collecting the annual fee for participation in the system, as well as giving out tokens to providers that match the requirements for participation. Finally, the certificate authorities are the companies that provide the certificates that you use to sign the calls, and there are a handful of those. Before we look at the actual call flow for Stir Shaken, there's an important aspect we need to go over first. Whenever a call is signed by the originating provider, an attestation level is applied based off of the provider's relationship with the caller and with the phone number that the caller is using as a caller ID. The different attestation levels are varying levels of trust in that calling. A, or full attestation, is applied whenever the originating carrier has directly authenticated the customer and has established a verified association or ownership with the number being used. This means if you were to purchase a DID from Sangoma and use your Sangoma service to make a call from that number, Sangoma would apply an A or full attestation level to the call. This is because we are not only able to verify your identity, but also know that you own that phone number. The next level of attestation is B or partial attestation. This level of attestation is assigned to a call in which the originating carrier has directly authenticated their relationship with the calling party, but does not have a very verified relationship with the phone number being used on the call. This means if you have purchased a DID through a different provider, but use Sangoma to make an outbound call with that DID, we would apply a B or partial attestation level to the call, while also being sad that you didn't buy the number through us. This is because we were able to verify your identity, but not that you own that phone number. The final level of attestation is a somewhat special case. That is C or gateway attestation. The gateway attestation is used whenever the originating carrier has no relationship with the initiator of the call. This would typically be used for international gateways on calls coming into the US, so that the call is signed, but with the stipulation that they are not able to verify the calling party. Now that we went over the different possible attestation levels, let's talk about the call flow, and we'll start with the originating carrier side of things. This diagram shows the originating carrier's responsibility in the stir shaken framework. The whole process starts with something simple, a caller trying to make a phone call. The calling party dials the phone number of the party they wish to reach, sending along the caller ID number assigned to that device. At that point, originating service provider takes the call and sends it to an authentication service. The authentication service will determine the attestation level of the call based off of the criteria we talked about in the previous slide. Those criteria were the relationship the provider has with the calling party and the calling party's confirmed association with the phone number being used to make the call. Once the attestation level is determined by the authentication service, it will authenticate the call by generating a SIP passport header with a private key obtained from a secure key store. 
We went over the certificates and keys a little bit whenever we talked about the different authorities, and these will be used on the terminating carrier side. At this point, the responsibilities of the originating carrier have been met. The SIP invite with a SIP identity header and private key is sent to, along to be delivered to the terminating service provider. It is possible that the call will be passed to one or more intermediate providers at this time. Those providers' responsibility is to ensure that the SIP header that was created is retained through their network and passed along to the terminating carrier or next intermediate carrier in route. With the originating carrier side complete, let's look at the terminating carrier's responsibility. The terminating carrier will receive the SIP invite sent, complete with the new header and private key. On this side of the call, instead of the carrier using an authentication service, they're using a verification service. This verification service reaches out to the originating carrier's certificate repository for a public certificate and key. The originating carrier sends the certificate and validates that the call is from an authenticated source. It does this by examining the certificate issuer to make sure it's from the originating service provider. Then it validates that the certificate authority that issued the certificate is from a list of approved authorities. There are three different outcomes from this process. First, a TN validation passed, which means that the call has been verified as coming from the originating carrier that signed it. Second, a TN validation failed, which means that the certificate could not be trusted or that a public certificate could not be retrieved. Or third, that no validation has occurred, typically because the call was not signed. From there, the terminating carrier can reject calls that were not successfully validated or that don't have a high enough attestation level or send calls, including the attestation level to the called party if they were validated. So that's a really quick overview on what stir shaken is. There are several pieces of the regulation and technology that don't account for some scenarios. Like any technology, it will iterate upon itself and improve throughout its lifetime. There are a few proposed ways of changing how TN ownership and authorization is handled within the system. These changes are to help with instances where you're buying a phone number from a carrier different from the one you're sending the call through. Certificate delegation is one of these changes and has been formally adopted. With certificate delegation, the carrier who owns a phone number can delegate a certificate to their customers to help the customer show ownership. This delegated certificate would be for a list of phone numbers purchased from the carrier by that customer. In our previous examples of a BI communication services customer receiving a partial attestation level call, certificate delegation would allow the customer to share their delegated certificate with BI. That would then allow them to sign the call, us to sign the call with an A or full attestation. Right now, BI Communication Services isn't set up to handle this scenario, but we'll be working on implementing systems and processes to allow this to happen after we complete implementation of stir shaken. Another alternative way of handling ownership that is being discussed is a centralized database. The idea would be to have a database listing the ownership status of telephone numbers. In this solution, a centralized database would house all of the numbers with the company not carrier, that owns the number. Companies would have an identifier inside this database and carriers would need to update the database if a phone number is purchased or released. In this solution, the originating service provider would query against the database to confirm if the calling party is authorized to send from the number they are calling from. Again, to use the example of a VI customer purchasing their number through another provider, the carrier that owns that number would update this database, linking the number with the customer. VI would then query the database when a call is sent out to see that that customer is authorized to send from that phone number. We would then be able to provide an A or full attestation level to that call. For those who are implementing Stir Shaken, and we'll go over shortly whether you should, the deadline of June 30th isn't the end of the requirements though. There are some additional requirements and deadlines that you must meet and adhere to. First, once you have your certificate, 
In order to keep your compliance status, you must agree to cooperate with the industry traceback group, a group headed by U.S. Telecom whose sole purpose is the battle against illegal robocalls. You must also cooperate with law enforcement agencies and the FCC to stop any illegal robocalls that they find originating on your network. Second, both intermediate providers and terminating carriers will be prohibited from accepting calls from providers that don't have a certificate on file starting September 28, 2021. And the last thing is, is a change in the requirements for participating in the ecosystem. Currently, in order to get your own certificate, you need direct access to purchase phone numbers from the National Polling Administrator, SOMOS. This requirement is going to have an alternative for companies that may not be able to do that. Instead, you will be able to go through a process to certify that you have implemented StirShaken or a robocall mitigation framework on your network. That will be an option no earlier than March 31st of 2021. These are just some of the things that are starting to be discussed or are already planned to go into effect. We can certainly expect to see more changes to the system and its requirements down the line. So, how can VI Communication Services help you through all this? First, the most important thing on everybody's mind, what do I need to do? It is our interpretation that VI Communication Services customers who are reselling our service are not required to implement Stir Shaken, since they are not directly passing the calls to PSDN. However, Given the vast number of use cases possible whenever purchasing service through us, we would suggest to reach out to a regulatory expert to ensure that that is the case for you. Also, this is the case now, but that may change in the future, so be sure to stay up to date with information regarding Stir Shaken. If you are a VI Communication Services customer, any calls that you send out through our network will be signed and any inbound calls will be verified with our verification service. This should be sufficient to handle most use cases, but there are still some cases where you would want to sign your own calls, even if you're not required to. So what are those instances that you would want to sign your own calls? This is by no means a complete list of reasons to sign your own calls, but it's some of the more likely scenarios. If you're a business that buys voice services from multiple vendors, or your business involves you legitimately spoofing caller IDs on behalf of your clients, such as a outbound contact center, you may want to implement a solution to sign your own calls to ensure the highest possible attestation level and to make sure that your business doesn't have to deal with rejected calls. If you're a service provider working with multiple carriers, if you weren't signing your own calls in order to ensure the highest possible level of attestation, you would need to update your outbound routing to account for the carrier you bought the caller ID through. This would mean setting up and maintaining complicated caller ID based routing to ensure that your customer's calls complete. Signing your own calls would allow you to provide the highest possible level of service for your customers and help prevent support overload from rejected calls. Overall, the process makes it so that more work needs to be put in to send outbound calls through a provider that you don't buy the caller ID from. Let's assume that you have decided to sign your own calls. What do you need to do to make that happen? Well, currently under the governance authority rules, a provider must meet the th following three requirements. First, a current 499A filing with the FCC on file. This signifies that you're a telecommunications provider and the stir shaken participation fee is based off of the revenue you file on this form. Second, an OCN or operating company number. This is given out by NANPA or the North American Numbering Plan Administration to telecommunications carriers. And finally, direct access to telephone numbers from the National Polling Administrator, SOMOS. This means the ability to purchase blocks of phone numbers that are then owned by your company. Now, the final point is most likely the one stopping from someone from signing their own calls, and the governance authority recognizes that. We had alluded to requirements for the the program changing, and this is where the alternative option will be made. 
Instead of requiring direct access to telephone numbers, there will be a process where carriers can certify that they've implemented Stir Shaken or a robocall mitigation program. If they can certify they've done one of these things, they can then register with the FCC database and receive a certificate of their own. Again, this option will be made available no earlier than March 31st, 2021. Once you've met these three requirements, you can reach out to iConnective, the current policy administrator, to start the process of applying for a token, which will then let you get a certificate from a certificate authority. Once you have a certificate, you'll also need to find a solution of implementing the authentication and verification services on your network. One, preferably, that works with the switches you're already using to route traffic. For those looking for some more ways of protecting themselves and their customers, VI Communication Services offers a robocall mitigation service for our customers. This service uses a fraud score between zero and 100 based off of behavioral analytics and caller ID authentication and verification. Depending on the fraud score, caller ID names will be prepended with robo, spam, or replaced entirely with fraudulent caller if the score is high enough. The service is available as an API, allowing you to integrate it into your network without changing the provider you buy in, inbound service from. Alternatively, for numbers that you buy through VI, the service is included with your normal CNAM service. We're hoping to use this system to decrease that $10.5 billion number. In addition to robocall mitigation services, VI Communication Services offers many other products to make your lives easier and help you differentiate from your competitors. In addition to our large network of DIDs and origination services, we have an A to Z termination service with fraud protection that allows you to set up daily spend limits as well as setting maximum per minute rates. We can offer SMS on almost any US or Canada number, even if you don't purchase the number through us. And our SMS service allows for quite a few different delivery options, including email, forwarding it to another phone number, SIP, or API. These are just some of the tools that we offer to manage and grow your business. Our goal is to enable you to focus on growing instead of spending countless hours juggling multiple vendor accounts, contracts, and portals. And that's all I have for you today. I'd like to thank everyone for your time. I hope your, this webinar was helpful in trying to understand exactly what Stir Shaken is. There's certainly a lot of information to go through in the time we took. And as exciting as it was, it's certainly possible we lost some people. So we'll be sure to make a copy of this presentation available, including commentary in the speaker notes. Or if you enjoyed the sultry, dulcet tones of my voice, a recording of the webinar will be made available to view at your leisure within the next couple of days. This just scratched the surface of Stir Shaken. So Sangoma is working on some additional educational material to make sure that we all become experts on stir shaking. So be on the lookout for additional emails, videos, and blog posts to find out more. If you have any questions about Sangoma's implementation plan for stir shaking or any questions that weren't answered in this webinar about it, please feel free to email me and I will try to help you as much as I can. If you're a VI communication services customer, we're committed to doing as much of the legwork as this, on this as possible. We will continue to investigate improving our implementation and offering as much control over the system as possible to you. Thank you again for your time, everybody, and watch for communication from us on resources that get more detailed with the technology and its requirements.